On the previous episode, we began the long Alaska highway journey, all the way from Dawson Creek, British Columbia, to Leard Hot Springs. Today, after soaking in the thermal waters, we continue towards Watson Lake in the Yukon, Whitehorse, and eventually the 49th state, the last frontier, also known as Alaska. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Alright, let's go check out the hot springs. By the way, we decided to stay at the RV park and lodge for one, two reasons. No trees, so Starlink is gonna work well. You know, 30 amp power. And there's a gas station right here. And I believe those are the generators that are providing our power. By the way, cool lodge. They have a restaurant that opens until 7 p.m. And yeah, not bad. Let's see how pedestrian friendly this is. I believe, I believe this is overflow boondocking here, you know? And uh, it's a beautiful mountain back there. Let's see if we can go inside. Pedestrian entrance. Well, that was very easy. Five dollars just for to use the hot springs to take a dip a dip in the hot springs and the Canadians are so nice. For the most part, everybody's been like super nice. Trail to hot springs, but she said to cut through the playground, so yeah, I guess this is it. Here we go, electric fencing. Hmm, someone left their swimwear here. Hmm. Interesting. The whole boardwalk trail is an easy 15 minute walk, about one kilometer. And let me tell you, we picked a good day because the weather pretty warm I mean it's I'm doing Celsius now it's low 20s and we're finally here I've been hearing about this place for so many years and to at last being able to see it with my own eyes, in person, and to share it with you. This is it. Whoa. This is very hot. Eventually, your body gets acclimated to the temperature and generally it gets cooler the farther downstream you go. It is actually very pleasant here. Let's explore a little bit. It keeps going this way. Over here it gets cooler at the bottom. Yeah, this is almost too hot. I'm boiling now. I'm getting out of here. Woo. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> One thing's for sure, it is beautiful here. And the water is pretty clear. This is, of course, a very popular stop with people doing the Alaska Highway. Here's one of the springs that fit the pool. Let's check the temperature. This one is actually the cold water. Okay. That was a very relaxing bath. Now let's go see the hanging garden. Temperatures in Alpha Pool range from 36 Celsius to 52, no wonder. All right, let's go check out the hanging gardens. Is this it? Let's see what else there is. Keep going up and up. And this is the end. All right, let's go back to Minitini 4 and tomorrow the journey continues. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do anything else today. It's beautiful out here, beautiful. Well, that's a very long checking line. Yep, everybody decided to come at the same time. It doesn't always have to be a culinary delicacy. Today we're having some pizza, proudly prepared in Canada, with real Canadian cheese. Let's read the instructions. Well, it looked a lot better in the picture. Let's do it. And here's the final product. Let's partake. Good morning. Today we're going into the Yukon territory, uh, Watson Lake to be exact, and uh, a couple of things here in the North Country. When it doesn't get dark for like only four hours at night, <laughs> mainly or even less, uh, time is becoming kind of irrelevant. You know, it's like we've been going to sleep early, going, you know, waking up early. It's kind of weird. And the other thing, the weather is totally unpredictable. I mean, look at the sky. We got perfect blue skies. Now, today we had 100% rain. It, it may happen later, but uh, it was supposed to. It's like the, there's no radar. You know, you go to the my radar app or whatever weather app, you go to the radar, and the radar has nothing to do with reality. Like a couple of days ago, it was raining. You know, we, you know when we were uh, at the. I forget the name of the town, at the IGA, Fort Nelson. And uh, it was it was uh, it was even hail coming down from the sky, and according to my radar, it was clear, you know, partly cloudy, whatnot. So maybe they don't have enough weather stations up here. I don't know. It, it's uh, it's been a learning curve. The journey continues. Today's destination: Watson Lake in the Yukon Territory. conditions. I was expecting this to be like super bad and yeah there's some rough patches and I know it's gonna it's supposed to get worse uh, after destruction bay but so far I mean I've, I've been in, in worst uh, you know stretches of interstate than this 
So, uh, yeah, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with the quality of the road so far. Here on the left, it is still the Liard River, which we're going to follow more or less all the way to Watson Lake. Hey, check it out! We've got bison! Lots of them! Let's pull over real quick. All of a sudden, I feel like I'm back at Yellowstone or the Black Hills, but here, in northern British Columbia, we have bison too. Fascinating beasts. And to think, they almost became extinct. It is a whole herd of them. Hey, take your time. No worries. Okay, that was super cool. Oh no, one of my tires is losing air. Let's see if we can make it to the next gas station. Black bear alert on the right. Here we are, Coal River. Let's fill up and find out about that tire. Hmm, buy some burgers. How appropriate. Anyway, apparently the closest tire shop is in Watson Lake. I'm gonna air the tire and hope it holds it long enough. Here we have another black bear, this time on the left. So far, this has been a great, beautiful drive. Lots of wildlife. And uh, not as remote as we thought. There are services here and there, just not a tire shop. Luckily, our tire is still holding air. Here we've got more bison. We didn't have breakfast this morning, and there's supposed to be a scenic rest area here on the left, so let's stop and get something to eat, and then we'll continue. Okay, let's see what we have in the freezer. Whoops. A 
it's gonna be breakfast pockets because I don't feel like cooking. I just love having an inverter so we can, you know, just use the microwave on the side of the road like this. We're hungry. It is kind of like a breakfast hot pocket. I had never seen this one, this one before. It looks like a pandewono from the outside. Hmm. Oh, that's hot. Well, this is called Allen's Lookout, so let's check it out. I parked a little too close to that tree. I believe north is that way. So Starlink, a little unreliable here, which, by the way, Starlink has been a game changer here in the in these uh, remote areas. You know, uh, Winnebago installed the, the in-motion in dish on the roof, and it's being a lot more reliable than the regular one, a lot less, less uh, susceptible to obstructions. And you know, we've been like normal, you know, talking on the phone, accessing the internet everywhere. It's been really good, cool, really cool. And uh, one more update, that tire seems, seems to be holding steady. So I don't know what's going on. There's a tire shop in Watson Lake, so we might get it looked at there. Let's see if there's a view here at Allen's Overlook. Hmm, maybe there's a trail. Let's see the view into the other side. Such a beautiful morning here. Whoa, look at that. Look at the precipice. Great views of the Leard River from this vanish point. We're about to cross into the Yukon territory. So let's continue. Let's hit the road. Oh, we've got visitors. Let's see what the marker says. The monument dedicated to the surveyors of the Alaska Highway. There you go. And it looks like someone has been camping here. All right, let's continue. Well, we all knew road conditions were bound to deteriorate at some point, right? Luckily, it is just a short section this time. Here we are, about to reach one of the milestones of our trip. And we have arrived in the Yukon Territory. This is one of two signs we're going to encounter as we go into the Yukon because, you know, you, we're, going, we're going west like this and what happens, we're going into the Yukon but we're going to dip back into British Columbia and then right before Whitehorse, that's the actual, the, the pretty sign. This is, let's not call it the ugly sign, but I mean, it's, it's a little, uh, <laughs> so many stickers. Uh, maybe I should put my, my own sticker here somewhere. In fact, that's what I'm gonna do. Well, there it is for posterity. If you happen to be traveling on the Alcan within the next year or so, let me know if it's still there. I doubt it is gonna last very long with the harsh winter here, but well, we'll continue.
Here, this is that second sign I was talking about. Well, it is official. We've made it to the Yukon, where no Minitini has ever gone before. <laughs> Watson Lake is just a few kilometers away. And here we are, Watson Lake. We're going to be staying at Downtown RV Park, pretty centrally located, next to a grocery store and two blocks away from the main point of interest here in Watson Lake. The owner, very colorful character. We're home. Well, now we're going to the landmark that put Watson Lake on the map. This small speckle on the map of the Yukon Territory. And that is the Signpost Forest. By the way, this RV park, no frills, utilitarian, but very nice, very conveniently located. Very nice gentleman who runs it. And, uh, and now it's about a five minute walk to the Signpost Forest. We have the grocery store right next to it, so if we want to buy something for, for today, for the rest of the trip, it's right there. And we get a discount on the next door a gas station. And I can already see it over there. It is so great to be here, finally, in person. And here we are at the famous signpost forest. Now all we need to do is find a suitable spot to hang this. We'll see, let's see if we find a suitable spot. And of course, I'm going to drop the GPS coordinates. So if you happen to come here someday, you can find it. It all started with the homesick soldier in 1942, during the construction of the Alaska Highway. One Carl Lindley added his hometown sign to an army mile post, and eventually it became a tradition. People from all over the world now bring signs or license plates, anything from their hometown, and find an empty space in one of these posts to leave their mark. Today it is our turn to leave ours. Not an easy task. I mean, there's not a whole lot of room here, so I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm sure we'll find something. contraptions back here and it keeps going and going and going and it's like endless I don't know we'll find we found we'll find the post well given the circumstances I think this is the best we're gonna be able to do at least it's a relatively light colored uh, wood so at least the pelican is gonna show so uh, here we are at the signpost forest on this momentous occasion I'm not going to be able to use the four holes that came with it, but we're going to improvise. I'm going to drill a hole through the pelican's head, and then we'll find two other holes down here somewhere. That should stay there. And that's our signpost forest sign. Well, as it is tradition, there's a sign, I'm going to drop the GPS coordinates, so if you're here, maybe you can find it. Ooh, it's windy! the first W.Y.E. Lake Park. Well, this is right next to the campground, so let's see what it looks like. And here's the lake, hiding in plain sight. There's a trail that goes along the lake shore, so let's walk on it for a little bit.
a very nice trail, especially for birding and, and the plant life is, is beautiful, but it's no moraine lake, so we're gonna go back. And, uh, and there's a, a Northern Lights Center here in town that, that I wanna check out. You think it might rain? Oh, this place really filled up, huh? Well, this seems to be the other major attraction here. Well, Pluto is no longer a planet, so they gotta take that down. Well, apparently the next show is in 45 minutes, and it seems to be like just a movie, so we may or may not come back. I mean, I don't have high hopes, so... <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little more than that. But well, since the Northern Lights Center was kind of a bust, we came back to the signpost forest. <laughs> see if our sign's still there and, uh, and see if we find someone we know or someone we've heard of, someone we've seen on, on, on YouTube. I mean, I know every YouTuber before us have, has put a sign in here, so. This is how it all got started in 1942. Little did they know, <laughs> they had created a monster here, right? <laughs> but it, it, is a, it is a great attraction, I like it. All right, let's go locate some famous signs here. Check it out, Irizari. I wonder if they are related to William. Check it out, Golden Anniversary is here. Let's keep looking. Let's keep looking. Hmm, someone from Zephyr Hills, Florida, where they make the water. Here's one. It is none other than A plus K. They were here last year. I'm sure there are many others we know, but it is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Here's KYD. Keep your daydream. This is where we are. Past the boardwalk. There's a lonely pelican. Right down there. And that's it for today. Very glad we got to see the signpost forest. And uh, isn't this like the biggest light ever? <laughs> anyway, tomorrow, white horse. Well, what can I say? Up until now, we've been very lucky with the weather. Um, you know, we've been blessed with sunny days and, uh, and you know, hardly any rain. But today is kind of, you know, it's, it's not like pouring down like other times, but it's kind of cold and a little miserable. But, you know, as I said, we've been very lucky. This is the way I think it usually is around here. All right, let's go to Jackson. No, Jack, I, I can't even, I don't even know where we're going. White horse. <laughs> we continue on the Alcan. We still have at least two more travel days here, mostly nonstop, but the scenery is supposed to be spectacular. So let's put gas. 182.9 per liter, I don't think it's that bad considering where we are. And it's one of those rare places where you pump first and you pay later. Saying goodbye to the signpost forest. See you in about six weeks. Crossing the Liard River one more time. We've got some rain, but it looks like it might be clearing up ahead. Yep, there's a hint of blue sky on the horizon. There are also some snow-capped peaks, part of the Cassiar Mountains, perhaps.
Let's stop for a moment here. I have a lot of maybe pollen or what looks like cotton balls actually stuck on the cowl vent and I'm going to try and remove them as much as possible. Meanwhile, as I'm about to open the hood, look who's coming to dinner. Or for dinner, perhaps. Maybe I am dinner. Or breakfast, rather. Yep, a friendly Yukon fox. I got back in quickly, just in case. Okay, that was a little bit scary. Just getting better and better. What a gorgeous part of the drive. We're going to take another quick break, switch drivers, and continue. Quick break on the side of the road here with mountain views. Now approaching the village of Teslin. We're gonna fill up, have lunch, and switch drivers again. I was tempted to go into the restaurant, but we're just making sandwiches. We keep on going. Now crossing the Teslin River. Here we are, about to cross the mighty Yukon River. Not so mighty this far upstream as we're hoping to see it in a few days in Alaska. Still pretty wide. Anyway, let's stop for a few minutes. Well, yeah, taking a break here on the side of the Alaska Highway. The Yukon River. I think the next time we cross it will be on the Dalton Highway in Alaska. Right now, let's make sure all the cameras are working and we continue. We are like less than half an hour away from, from Whitehorse. As 
USS Klondike National Historic Site may close within one hour of when you arrive. We'll make it. Anyways, crossing the mighty Yukon River. And um, yeah, the mosquitoes are getting progressively worse. Still not Alaska level of mosquitoes, but it's, they're getting there. Now arriving in Whitehorse, the capital of the Yukon Territory. And that is the SS Klondike, probably the only thing we're going to do here in Whitehorse. The Yukon Beringia Interpretive Center is closed as of our visit here on June 17th, too early in the season. And there is a wildlife preserve and some hot springs, which if we find somewhere to spend the night nearby, maybe. Well, there it is, the SS Klondike. Unfortunately, we can only see it from the outside. But by the time you watch this, they may have reopened. This is one of Canada's few remaining steam-powered paddle wheelers. Another one is the SS Kino, which we will see from the outside as well when we get to Dawson City on the return trip. Up until 1950, this riverboat served as the main link between the Yukon and the outside world. That's as close as we can get. Unfortunately, the inside of the ship is uh, currently closed for renovations. So all we can do is, is see it from the outside here and, um, and go for a stroll along the Yukon River. Pretty swift current we have here on the Yukon. Whitehorse seems very clean, very modern, considering its remoteness. It almost feels Nordic, but we're finding it hard to find a place to boondock for tonight. I mean, there are several campgrounds in town, but none of them look too appealing. And the truth is, we don't really need hookups today. We want to embrace the romantic idea of boondocking at least part of the way to Alaska. Let's check out this real Canadian superstore. We need some supplies, and it seems very similar to Walmart. But that real Canadian superstore, very nice. I didn't film much inside it. There were a lot of people, and uh, but yeah, it's uh, and uh, White Horse here seems to be a great town. Uh, and there's, I know there's a lot of things to do. There were some hot springs and the Yukon Wildlife Center. Uh, lots of stuff that, that we could have done here in this town, but we're gonna keep on going, take advantage that the weather is so nice, and uh, you know, keep pushing towards Alaska. Check it out, wild horses, doing wild things, perhaps. Oh, 
these are some very impressive mountains coming up ahead. Oh wow, look at those mountains, almost fully covered in snow. I don't know, but to me, it is starting to look like Alaska. This place is called Otter Falls, at a place Google Maps calls simply Canyon. And I think this is where we're gonna stay. I really wanted to keep going, find boondocking, but I'm really tired after an all-day drive, so this is it. Not the idyllic boondocking spot I had envisioned for today, but tell you what, we're tired. We've got some magnificent mountains just in front of us uh, that tomorrow in the morning, it's, I have a feeling it's going to be a beautiful drive. Yeah, we could have boondocked, but um, I mean, one of the rest areas that we stopped by earlier said no overnight parking, so apparently in this area uh, overnight parking at some of the rest areas is frowned upon like here, it's a truck stop but overnight parking at the truck stop is not for RVs, if you're on RV you have to pay $25 for dry camping so I figure, you know, for 20 extra dollars I got full hookups actually, I think this one is just water and electric we just needed a site with no trees and then tomorrow we, we go towards Haynes Junction, Destruction Bay, and we'll probably get to cross the border tomorrow as well. For now, he's gonna work a little bit, get some dinner going, and I'll see you tomorrow. Coming up next, the scenery gets even better. We find another perfect overnight boondocking spot. And after stopping at Canada's most westerly community, we finally make it to the 49th state. We'll find yet another awesome overnight spot. And then, the end of the road. All that and more on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching. And see you on the road. Riding in my